Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer True Fans Killer Toy Reviews and today we're going to be doing another prediction video this time around. It's Papo. What has Papo got up their sleeve for 2021? Well that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video. Last year the reveal happened on the 12th of December and now that November is officially behind us I'd best get to making this video before teaser images or even the whole dang reveal drops. I'm kind of going to be doing the same thing I did with the Safari predictions. I'm going to be looking back at Papo's past four prehistoric lines and using that to influence my prediction. I'm also going to be taking the current state of things into consideration as well as reactions to last year's lineup. So with that in mind, let's break it down. From 2017 to 2020, Papo have produced 28 models for their prehistoric line, leading to an average 7 models a year. 2017 saw 9 models, including 2 prehistoric mammals, 4 original dinosaurs, 1 flying reptile, and 2 repaints. It was the biggest year of the four, which leads us to 2018. Although more models were produced as part of the 2017 line, 2018 saw an impressive 5 original original dinosaur sculpts, one flying reptile, and a mere one repaint, making it the best year for original dinosaur creations. 2019 produced six models, but half of those were repaints. We got two original molds for the standard line and one limited edition offering, leading me to believe that Papo pooled their resources into creating that Spinosaurus and opted to pad the line with repaints. 2020 saw six models, two of which were repaints, three original dinosaurs, and one prehistoric mammal. Of the 28 prehistoric models Papo produced in the past four years, we have had three prehistoric mammals, two flying reptiles, eight repaints, and 15 original dinosaur sculpts. Of those 15, five were inspired by some form of dinosaur media, most obviously the Jurassic franchise. On a similar note, the two flying reptiles also took inspiration from media, meaning roughly 25% of Papo's original creations from the past four lines were media inspired. About 28.5% were repaints, about 32% were more scientific dinosaur models, I use the term scientific loosely here, and roughly 11% were mammals. I know those numbers don't add up, but it's all rough estimates here, bear in mind. Even though the average has been seven models, for the last two years in a row there have been merely six models in the lineup. I also think this year was met with very mixed reactions, so sales might have suffered a bit. Combined Combine that with the pandemic preventing even more people from spending money on dinosaur models and you're looking at a lot of lost profits for Papo in 2020. With that in mind, I wouldn't be surprised if we only get five prehistoric models for 2021. I'm going to go ahead and predict six, but if we get that number, I reckon half or more will be repaints, while the remainder will be original sculpts like in 2019, just to help keep costs down. I wouldn't be surprised if only five came out after the rough year Papo has had, both critically and commercially, but we'll do six like in the Safari prediction video gives me more chance to be right, I guess. Of course, Safari only ended up producing three true dinosaur models, but unlike Papo, Safari rarely relies on repaints to add to their lineup, and with that in mind, I still think we can expect more from Papo this year, so let's begin. I'm going to start off with repaints. There's always at least one repaint in any given line, and I only think there were so few in 2018 because 2017 was such a big year for Papo. But with this year being smaller and less well received and everything else that's worked against Papo, I'm estimating at least another three repaints this time around. My first one is an obvious choice and it's my number one prediction, it's the Triceratops. I can see this one getting a repaint for several reasons. First and foremost, it's one of Papo's oldest models still in production that hasn't already gotten a repaint. Another reason I can see Papo going this direction is Triceratops is a very popular species, so even if it is a repaint, I imagine it would still sell well to children and collectors, especially if it was given a more vibrant color scheme. But if they did want to keep it simple, as an added bonus to this idea, I don't think they would need to change much of what they have. It's pretty obvious that the trike is greatly inspired by Jurassic Park, and if Papa wanted to give us a new color scheme, they could go for the more blue-gray tones to closer resemble the animal of Jurassic World. It's a quick change that would still incentivize both fans and collectors to add it 
added to the collection, and that's why this is my number one prediction. Of course, they'd have to be competing with Eofauna, which I'm sure would be a bloodbath, but still. For my second repaint prediction, I think this is more of a want than a prediction. I'm much less certain this will happen, but I am seeing a repaint of the 2019 Gorgosaurus. Admittedly, the brown version hasn't been on the market for that long, but Papo have been known to be pretty quick about their repaints. The old Velociraptor mold, that got a repaint every couple years, and the Acrocanthosaurus went a mere one year before the first version was replaced. The reason I can see Papo doing this is because they opted not to go the obvious route with the original model. It should be no surprise to anyone that the Papo Gorgon is based on the walking with dinosaurs counterpart but in sculpt only. Instead of giving the figure that striking blue coloration from the films, Papo went with the usual dull, earthy colors. That being said, if they flipped the switch and started producing a model with a more eye-catching color scheme that better reflects the film counterpart, I can see people clamoring to buy that version over the original. I don't know if it will happen, but again, it seems an obvious choice for Papo to make at some point or other. And for my final repaint prediction, I can see Papo choosing to redo their Carnotaurus. This is another old mold that is yet to get the repaint treatment. We saw this year with the release of the Stiggy Moloch that Papo is ready and willing to cash in on the popularity of Fallen Kingdom. So a redone Carno in warmer colors would not surprise me at this point. This one, like the Gorgon, seems to be based on a dinosaur from film, but it lacks the color scheme of the animal that inspired it. For that reason, I think this Carno is poised for a repaint that draws either more from the Carno from Disney's Dinosaur or the Fallen Kingdom version. And all of that is before we even mention the widespread success of Camp Cretaceous, so I'm sure that that's some additional incentive for Papo. All right, now for the original sculpts. The first prediction for the original sculpt is kind of a cheat, but oh well. A while ago, there was a leak that seemed to indicate that Papo would be releasing a limited edition Dreadnoughtus. I forget where exactly this leak came from. I'll try to find a screenshot and put it in the video, but regardless, I can see this happening for 2021. Reason being, some time has actually passed now since we got our last limited edition offering, and also, it's been forever since Papo have done a decent and sizable sauropod. A heavy hitter like Dreadnoughtus would be a great way to bring in some dough after a rough year, and I think the demand is there. Now, if this does happen, I don't think it will be revealed as part of the initial lineup, at least not if it's a limited edition offering. We would have to wait and see it like we did for the Spinosaurus, but either way, I think it's on the horizon. Prediction number two for original sculpt. So with the Dreadnoughtus coming out of the gates as the big figure of the year, I can see the other offerings being on the smaller side. My first thought with that in mind would be Gallimimus. Since Papo have made a name for themselves producing Jurassic Park slash world inspired models at an affordable price, it baffles me that they are yet to produce a Gallimimus. It's the only on-screen dinosaur from the first film that hasn't been produced by them, and since it's such an underrepresented species in model form, I can see there being a high demand for another model of this animal. Definitely seems like a no-brainer to me. I've definitely been waiting on them to do it. I got excited last year with the close-up of the Chilisaurus. I thought maybe, but no, I was disappointed. I, I wasn't disappointed. I was glad to see the Chilisaurus, but I'm still waiting on a JP-inspired Gallimimus from Papo. And my final prediction, I kind of went around in circles with this one. I, I kept going back to Fallen Kingdom or Jurassic World in general with Battle at Big Rock, and I thought maybe a Cenoceratops or perhaps a Nasutoceratops, but I figured if they're releasing a repaint of a trike, which I firmly believe they would do, they would not want to release other Ceratopsians alongside that out of fear that it would overshadow their one Ceratopsian offer this year. They, they want the repaints to sell. They want to keep making money off those molds, but if they gave us a totally new Ceratopsian, the repaint of a trike would not sell as well, so I kind of walked away from that idea. Corythosaurus also came to mind, but it didn't seem popular enough, and I, I felt like Papa was going to try and go with either big species or popular species. And because of that, my final prediction is going to sound vaguely familiar. A common component to each of Papo's lineups these past four years has been at least one large theropod. In 2019, we saw Papo produce an updated Spinosaurus model that actually turned out to be pretty accurate. But if there's one thing we know about Papo, it's that they love to cash in on the popularity of the JP franchise. They've already given us an updated Spinosaurus, so maybe it's time 
for an updated Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's right, my final prediction for an original sculpt from Papo is going to be an accurate Tyrannosaurus Rex update. Well, accurate for Papo standards anyway, okay? There aren't really any clues beyond my my reasoning and layout to cue me into this. The box art for the Spino doesn't indicate a new Rex sculpt. And if anything, Papo just released a repainted Rex last year to go along with that Spino. But I really don't think they would miss out on an opportunity to make an updated model for people to pit against their limited edition Spinosaurus. Like the Spinosaurus, it's a species Papo has haven't properly updated in years. And I feel like when that figure got revealed, the response to it was just insane. There were so many people excited for that update. So now I feel like Papa would want to strike while the iron's hot and get a Rex out. I mean, that's before we even mention that T-Rex is like a guaranteed seller, accurate or not. So since Papo always produces at least one big theropod figure for their lineups, I wouldn't be surprised if they played it safe with a crowd-pleasing Rex this year. And like in my Safari prediction video, I'll go ahead and toss out a couple of my wishes. I don't see Papo making these figures, but I would love to see them do it. First up, Majungasaurus. You all knew I was going to say it. We need more Majungas out there, and I think Papo could really deliver on one. It would also be a nice compliment to their Carno, so... There's that. I guess since they did the Chilisaurus this year, I'm a little more optimistic of them doing more obscure species, but again, I'm not holding my breath. That's why it wasn't part of my official prediction list. All right, another wish would be an Auranosaurus. I love this animal, I really do. Again, it's very underrepresented in model form, and I feel like Papo could make such a bizarre looking creature look really awesome if they wanted to. But yeah, the fact that it's not as mainstream as Papo usually keeps it has me doubting they would actually do it. And for my Final two wishes from Papo would love to see them do an Estamenosuchus or Shringosaurus. I feel like the bizarre appearance of these animals perfectly lends itself to Papo's hyper-stylized methods of creating models. But for whatever reason, the only pre-dinosaur creature they seem to have done is the Dimetrodon. Maybe since Safari and Collecta have done it, Papa will start to jump on the bandwagon, but probably not this year. So there you have it, guys and gals. That is going to do it for my official Papo predictions slash wish list for the year of 2021. I'm anxious to see if I got any right. I think any of these species I mentioned in the video would be a slam dunk from Papo as long as they don't do the goofy poses. I'm sure I'll miss a lot of them, though. I missed a lot with Safari. I think I only got the Baryonyx right. Uh, but that's where you guys come in. I want to hear what you think will be coming from Papo in the year of 2021. Let's get a conversation going. Drop a comment. Let's see if anyone here is right whenever Papo start to reveal their models. Hey, thanks for stopping by today's prediction video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I hope to see you again soon. Take care out there and bye-bye.